So before visiting Cuba or any tropical destination in the Caribbean region, you would probably spend time on TripAdvisor and get horrified by the prospects of bedbugs, parasites, etc, etc. As a medical scientist, also used to be a wildlife conservation scientist years ago, I'd like to give my opinion here. So, how to survive your tropical vacation in the Caribbean? Bugs edition. I will cover the three most common arthropods, as well as mention a quick word about parasites in general. I'll tell you what they are and how can they become a serious problem, and also some very basic actions that will significantly decrease the risk of this ever happening. So here we go. Number one is the Chigo flea, also called Jiga or simply sand flea. It lives naturally wherever there is rotting seaweed. It can survive in wet sand and it can inflict bites that can really resemble those of bedbugs. This crustacean, not an insect, can occasionally parasitize under your skin and that could be very unpleasant, like this example of a food that was infested with sand fleas. So, kinda imagine the crustacean version of a tick. It will most likely not endanger your life, but could still be quite upsetting. So, what should you do? For starters, never step in seaweed piles with bare feet and uh, avoid stepping on them with flip-flops as well. If you skip changing your beach towels at the end of your day, keep them on the balcony. Do not bring them in your rooms. A chigo flea or two might hitchhike a ride on them, especially on a wet day. Do not bury your feet deep in the sand, as you will get them in a wet layer where the sand fleas can also live. Take a shower after returning from the beach, especially concentrating on these parts of your body that were in direct contact with the sand. This organism is common in the region and is often the reason for involuntary slander, as its bites are often mistaken for bedbug bites. Therefore, tourists get really upset with their hotels, but this is not always the case. But how can you tell? Well, the obvious difference is that the Chigo flea will most likely bite what was exposed to wet sand and seaweed. In other words, mostly lower legs and nowhere else, while bed bugs seem to prefer more tender regions of your skin so they will not shy out of biting your face, abdomen, arms, armpits, etc. So if all skin reaction to bites happens below your knees, it is very likely that the culprit is the sand flea. If they are indiscriminately dispersed all over your body, well, then you can suspect bed bugs too. Number 2. Sand flies locally called hehenes. These are tiny dipterans with a painful bite, sometimes dangerous vector of certain parasites. As long as it is a sunny day and there is at least a little wind, sand fly bites should not be a factor. You risk being bitten in the evenings and early mornings. So what should you do? The solution is simple. Pack long linen trousers and wear them in the evening. This will alleviate the need of experimenting with toxic chemicals such as DET. Number 3. Mosquitoes. Two years ago they weren't much more of a discomfort. Today they can infect you with the Zika virus as the Caribbean region is now a high-risk zone and one of the places of the world with active spread of the Zika virus. And mind you, 
we still don't know what exactly Zika does. We only recently learned that it can have serious consequences, such as microcephaly. But what it actually does, what it actually causes to an adult human in the long term, we have no idea. Whether you even get cured or it stays in your organism for a long time or forever, like herpes virus for example, it is still to be discovered. So all of a sudden, beware mosquitoes. What you should do, I, I can't believe that I'm saying this, but for the first time I might consider that the risks of exposing yourself to a known neurotoxin such as DET might potentially be outweighed by the benefit of preventing a Zika infection. I personally would combine long trousers and long sleeved shirts in the evening with a tested repellent. The less toxic, the better, as long as it is effective. Also, you probably know that you can get Zika by having sex with a person who is infected by the virus. So, limit your adventures while there. I'm gonna now mention a few words about endoparasites. And I will start with something which apparently is perceived as an insignificant source of danger, and this is domestic animals. This could be a serious issue. On my trips, I have often noticed that many tourists did not use common sense and let their children touch and cuddle outdoor, if not completely homeless cats and dogs. This happened at resorts, beaches and streets. And then, to add health risk to poor hygiene choices, they would even allow them to touch their food without washing hands. And this is a big faux pas. Remember, you are in the tropics. There is a rich bouquet of parasites in any improperly vaccinated, deparasitized and then regularly followed up outdoor animal all over the world. Even drastically more so in the tropics. Many parasitic infections or parasitosis are often left undiagnosed and can cause severe health problems in short and long term. You will be surprised, there are parasites that can stay in your body forever and the only visible symptoms that will be manifested could be, let's say, delayed mental development if you got it as a child and decreased vitamin A, for example, in your bloodstream. And this will happen years after you return from the tropics, so I can guarantee you that unless this guy is your family doctor, no medical specialist on the planet will connect the above with your visit to the tropics 15 years ago that you yourself have forgotten about by now. Things could be way more serious, God forbid. So be mindful of the simple advice that is to come. I actually strongly suspect that many of the people who have digestive system problems after returning from these vacations actually manifest symptoms of parasitosis. Why? Well, food poisoning, which is often blamed for those symptoms, manifests shortly after ingesting the spoiled food. In other words, within few hours. Parasitosis, however, would become obvious only after the incubation period of the parasite, which varies from several days to weeks. So if you get such a problem only after having returned home, believe me, you have not been food poisoned. So what should you do? This is simple as well. Use common sense and proper hygiene. Avoid domestic animals altogether. Cats and dogs behind the hotels are stray animals, no matter how comfortable they feel around humans. They might look well fed and taken care for, as there are plenty of food leftovers from the tourists, 
but the abundance of slop does not necessarily make them deparasitized animals. So let them be. Also, avoid swimming in freshwater pools, lakes and rivers while you're in the tropics. Stick to the ocean and the least occupied chlorinated swimming pool. So in conclusion, very simple advices. Keep them in mind and you will significantly decrease the chances of nasty surprises and will very likely come back home with good memories only.